Hey guys, what's up? You wanna go to the garden with me for a minute? Hey, sweet Maya. You're so handy. I do try. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I wasn't so handy. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Maya's changing the rotors and the brakes on the car. He is very handy. All right, so it's definitely time for me to prune my roses, but they started blooming again. And so I figured I'd give them just a little while longer. I had intended to do a garden tour today and it started raining, so I didn't get to. Here's some big old carrots. Oh, that, is that actually a big carrot? Okay, now nah, they're probably getting pretty close to using them. Someone asked me recently, how do you know when your carrots are ready to harvest? And the only way I know is to pull them out. <laughs> uh, just any kind of root vegetables, if you just kind of brush the soil away from their shoulders, you can get a general idea of the size, but you pretty much have to pull one out to see what it really looks like. My friends, Nate and Jill, are keeping our farm this weekend while we're out of town for a couple of days and she was commenting on how there's still a lot going on here in the garden which is true there is still a lot going on a lot of stuff that's going to seed and look i've been so excited about the roselle but it hasn't been doing anything yet and everyone told me wait till october and it will now i have to figure out what to do with this <laughs> So if you guys would give me some advice, I'm going to do some Googling, but um, it's starting to set little, I guess, I can't remember what they're called, calyxes? I don't know, but looks like I'm going to get a roselle harvest after all. Look at this one plant. This is massive. I didn't know they got this big. I'd actually planted several here, and this is the only one that did anything. And I'm actually like, okay, I guess that was a good thing because this would have been just crazy. I'll know better next year when I plant these. Instead of planting them like next to a trellis here, I'll put them in the middle of the bed in an area where I can give them more space. But I'm gonna grow this again next year and just have lower expectations for how soon it's going to produce. Mm, this bolted basil just smells so good. My thyme, my thyme carpet is what this has turned into. Look at that, that's so silly. <laughs> and these roses are the others that have just taken off. These are Duchess something, I can't remember their name, but they are, but they are just so lovely. Look at this. I love these like cupped roses. The thing that's happening in the garden right now, and this is very typical of like the end of the season, is there are volunteers everywhere. There are ground cherries. Here are, let's see, that's a ground cherry. And see they have blossoms. There's some nasturtiums that volunteered. Just all over the whole garden, there's things that just pop up. Now that happens in the spring too, but of course I'm out here weeding, planting, amending. And so when things are popping up, I'm, I'm pulling them out, usually. Sometimes I leave things. That's how I end up with like random place flowers, random herbs, and you know, sometimes I'll leave the volunteers if they're in a place that I feel like they can actually produce well and not be in the way. But a lot of times I end up pulling them out. But in the fall, there's not any rush, especially like this year, and I decided to plant everything in the high tunnel. So I just let all these volunteers come up, and it's really cool, it's very, it's something I really enjoy seeing the things that just grow naturally. These dahlias are a showstopper every fall. And of course the blue butterfly peas, I've planted these here year after year. And one other interesting thing is this bed full of holy basil, look at this. It's just so much, that's a different kind of basil, Italian I think, but all of this is holy basil. All of this is volunteer holy basil, and I've already harvested a good deal of this, and it's hanging in, oh, it smells so good, just barely touching it. Amazing. Um, it's hanging in the basement, but I'm going to harvest some more. I give a lot of this to my friend Lauren. She uses it. Um, I make tea out of this. You can, you can steep these leaves fresh by just pouring boiling water over a handful of leaves. I can't even tell you an exact measure, measurement. I literally just take a handful. 
Um, or you can dry it and use it as tea, like a loose leaf tea. But my friend Lauren loves this and drinks a lot of it, so I always save a lot for her. Y'all want to go take a look at the baby pigs? Yes! Okay, real quick, I let's go back there. Wow, the look at that I one. Look at that rose. That's huge. That you... smells very good. Good. <laughs> one, one of my favorite goods are not. That's a pig. Not pig. I'm not pigs. pigs. Hmm? He said not pigs. I said, I, I said not pigs. I mean pigs. Okay, let's go see the pigs. Okay, we're just gonna look with our eyes, okay? We're not gonna touch them. Okay, is that black one named Thor? Wait, yep. said Step over the wire. You said we're gonna look with our eyes. Well, sometimes y'all say, I wanna go look at the pigs and then you touch them. So how do you look? Uh, with your eyes. Your eyes? <laughs> yes. Sorry, so, so there's a little runty pig and I was a little worried about him at first because he's half the size of the others but I've seen him eat, eating multiple times. He's staying nuzzled up next to her. And if this were a larger litter, I would be concerned. Like sometimes you'll have as many pigs as the pig has teats. And that's really bad for a runt because they just don't stand a chance. However, with only five litter mates to contend with and the fact that she is a seasoned mom, I'm not really that worried about him. He seems a lot sturdier this evening than he even did this morning. The pig having day was really fun. That was a really fun thing. Um, it was really cool for Malia to get to experience that. She's gone home now and made it safely home, which we're glad that she made it safely home and we'll see her at Christmas. Hey, you bitey girl, back up, back up. I'm happy about that. Y'all don't let Doris get up on you. She gets nibbly. No ma'am. I'm happy about what happened this morning. Bye. We're looking happy in here. Hey, mommy. Are there more babies? Yeah. Are there any tiny ones in there? Uh, no, there's no runts in this litter. So we have six big babies in this litter. Three black pigs and three blonde pigs. Hey, baby. How did he go? So Doris, Doris is called a swallow belly. That's her coloring, the black with the blonde belly. And then the others, Fanny here and Clem up there, they're both blondes, but they carry the black gene, obviously, so. They look good. Do y'all see all of the turnips that I sowed the other day coming up? See that really light green carpet doing what cover crops are supposed to do, covering the soil in this beautiful place. I'm so in love with my high tunnel. I need to name this garden in the high tunnel. I feel like it needs a name rather than just calling it the high tunnel garden. It was late and I'm so tired, but I wanted to wrap this video up. Um, I had intentions of coming home earlier. I had to take Jackson to jujitsu right after I turned the camera off, the last bit that you saw. I thought I would come home and shoot more, but it was dark. I'm totally not adjusted to the winter light situation. On the way home, I passed a road, like a crew working, and the road was kind of closed off on my street. And I was like, well, that's weird. Got home, we didn't have any water, which is, feels a little like the cherry on top this week. Um, so like a few weeks ago, a brand new oven stopped working, which we just remodeled our kitchen. Our oven was brand new. It's under warranty, thankfully. So the repairman's been coming out and troubleshooting and has come a few times and we haven't got it fixed yet. And then, and then the dishwasher stops working. Brand new dishwasher, under warranty. They're coming out to fix it this week. That's okay, we can wash dishes by hand. But then the water, the water broke. I'm just like, okay. It's back on now, thankfully, it's back on. And we're just getting ready to leave in the morning. We're just going away for a couple of days and um, really looking forward to that time but I just wanted to let you guys know, you know, this is one of those situations where I've been, I've had that moment, you know, that moment where you're like, you're not, you're not about what is happening. And you just want to scream and then you realize in perspective what a small problem it is. And so, you know, just been cooking in the roaster oven. I did that for several months before our kitchen remodel and during it. So it was a little flashback of that and... 
washing dishes by hand. I've done that plenty in my life. Um, and I don't know, instead of letting those things completely ruin my day and really get to me, instead I'm just using them as a point for perspective. I'm thankful we have running water and we have a nice oven when it works and a dishwasher when it works and it'll work again. But thank you guys for hanging out with me today. And um, I hope you enjoy getting, or have been enjoying, I guess by the time you see this video, the weekend will be almost over. Oh, we're not going live Sunday night. It should be Sunday when you see this. I think that's how the scheduling's gonna work out. That or Saturday, either way. No live Sunday night. But make sure you check out our friends, Whispering Willow Farms, uh, Jill and Nathan keeping our farm and they're gonna shoot some content while they're here. And I will be back with you guys at the beginning of the week. Thanks again for hanging out with me. God bless you. Until next time.